A day after a mob of pro-Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol building, the Lakers hosted the Spurs, where LeBron James was asked about his thoughts on what happened. We live in two Americas, and that was a prime example of that yesterday. And, um, and if you don't understand that or don't see that after seeing what you saw yesterday, then you, um, you really um, need to take a step back, not even just one step, maybe four or five or even 10 steps backwards um, and ask yourself, what, what, how, how do you want your, your kids or how do you want um, you know, your grandkids, how do we want America to be viewed as, how do we want to live you know, in, this, in this beautiful country? Um, because yesterday um, was not it. Yesterday, I think the big picture for me was how it, it just laid bare uh, the blatant, dangerous, debilitating racism that is our country's sin and has plagued us all these years. Uh, th there can't be a better obvious example of a system that is not fair as far as justice and equal rights are concerned and protection of citizens. It was uh, just right in your face. And anybody that can ignore that uh, is a shameful individual, in my opinion. All right, Greg Popovich with the high praise of LeBron James. Stephen A., I want to start with you here. What do you think the significance of, of LeBron's comments uh, speaking to the two Americas we're facing? Well, I think that <clears throat> it's incredibly significant because he's accurate, uh, he's on point, um, and he's mm -hmm. somebody that continues to illuminate and illustrate why uh, he's the great iconic figure that he is because not only is he the best basketball player in the world, um, but to be socially conscientious, uh, believe it or not, when he doesn't have to be, uh, it just speaks to his character as a man, uh, to his love for his community, um, and to some degree, his love for this nation and what it's supposed to be. Um, but he's not the only one. Um, we can't say enough about Greg Popovich, who's been speaking about these issues for a long time. fact that he is so outspoken and has been so outspoken and so eloquent and articulate in what he has had to say, um, our gratitude to him should know no limits. The same can be said for Steve Kerr. Um, and we keep forgetting that when we talk about violence and we talk about things uh, of a reprehensible nature in terms of people's behavior, uh, particularly as it pertains to politics, let's remember that in the 80s, Steve Kerr while at the University of Arizona, lost his father violently in Beirut. So we can't forget that. Uh, Scott Brooks being the head coach for the Wizards right there in the nation's capital, speaking so eloquently as he did the other day, um, having the relationships throughout the league that he has. He's a good man. Uh, and to hear him speak the way that he did was a great thing. Uh, the, the athletes that have spoken out, the Jalen Browns, who just continues to be more and more impressive every day, the Jason Tatum, who's just 22 years of age, Jalen Brown is 24 years of age, Russell Westbrook has been in this league for a long time fighting the fight that he's fought in terms of saying what needs to be said, the list goes on and on. LeBron being the leader that he is and it trickling down to all of his brethren, all of his contemporaries within the National Basketball Association all the way up to the top with Commissioner Adam Silver being as open and receptive and as fair-minded and as decent as he is. Um, it makes me very, very proud to be somebody that's been associated uh, with the NBA for the last quarter century covering this league. Uh, the people in it, I've always known that they were good people. I've always known they were socially conscientious individuals. But to see them step up at a moment like this, 
where they're willing to speak out and speak truth to power and be unapologetic about it and let the world know that they're not about to fade into the twilight, that they're going to be here to remind this nation of what we're supposed to be, not just what we are, but what we're supposed to be and the ideals and the standards that we're supposed to live up to and to remind this country that we repeatedly come up short time and time and time again and the nonsense has to stop. I think it's incredibly important. And the fact that it's coming from all different, all different stratospheres, it's coming from a player, it's coming from coaches, it's coming from GMs. Uh, let's not forget owners. Uh, Mark Cuban uh, has been incredibly supportive uh, since all this whole social justice stuff came to light since May, since the George Floyd killing and what have you. Mark Cuban isn't the only one. There's a plethora of owners who have done the same. made incredible contributions to causes that would help uplift disenfranchised communities throughout this nation. Again, it makes me incredibly proud to be associated um, with the National Basketball Association. I think other leagues can do a great, great service to themselves uh, to follow the lead that the NBA has provided. And I'm not saying they haven't. I'm just saying that they need to continue to do so. And I think that as long as that takes place, uh, then we'll go a long way towards reminding America why we're the greatest country on God's green earth, why we should be. And if we want to remain that way and take a stay instead of taking steps back like we did a couple of days ago, then it would behoove us to remind ourselves of the ideals that we live on and we supposedly stand by and we live up to them and measure up the way these individuals in this league that is the National Basketball Association clearly has done. LeBron James is absolutely right, and Popovich was right to mention LeBron. Of course we live in two separate Americas. Of course that's the case, and this always comes up or seems to come up, especially with outspoken athletes in recent years, at moments when, for example, armed insurrectionists riot in the state capitol building. By the way, a member of law enforcement was murdered during this riot. Um, and look at the consequences, look what happened. How are they even able to get into the building, right? LeBron James notices this. And, and he, and many, many people, including Doc Rivers and Russell Westbrook, and maybe imagine if they were black, what would have happened? We live in two separate Americas, and that's been the case since Africans were brought here in chains, in slavery. And, and by the way, Stephen A., the two separate Americas at this point, I mean, it's, it's economic, obviously. I mean, look where people live, look how much money they earn, um, look how they vote, it's two separate Americas. But really, when you go back, right post-slavery, there was the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, equal protection under the law. And people have ever heard of Plessy versus Ferguson, what does this mean? That meant that the Supreme Court said, no, 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 you can be separated, it's separate but equal. That doesn't violate equal protection under the law after slavery. And that held for a very, very long time. This is the 19th century. And it wasn't until Brown versus the Board of Education in the 1950s, 1954, that they finally said, okay, fine, this is a farce. Of, of course, black kids can go to public school with white kids. Yes, they can, because this is not equal protection under the law. You have two separate Americas. And what people notice is 
there are still uh, many ways in which they are separate. Legally, there are greater and greater protections, but there are still remnants of our original sin that are still extant. And socially, there are two different Americas, the social milieu in which we operate. It's not just a few bad seeds in law enforcement say, hey, let's get the black people. It's the very idea that that when, they, when people see white people coming, they react differently. They value those lives. And when they see black people coming, let's just put it this way. We've always had a very high tolerance in this country for dead black people. LeBron James is absolutely correct. Recent events uh, highlight this. He's right to point it out. And as you mentioned, Stephen A., it's important, not just that this is left to African-American uh, uh, people in positions of uh, celebrity, uh, or in this case, athletes, LeBron James, for example, to point it out, but that people of socially conscious people, people like Greg Popovich and Steve Kerr, who you just mentioned, also back them up and themselves take the lead on it. And so, by the way, the NBA and the WNBA has been leading on this issue from day one, and I applaud LeBron James and Greg Popovich. No question. And my prayers are with the families of the four victims that lost their lives in this devastating tragedy that took place at our Capitol. We will leave it there. When we come back, fellas, uh, we're going to head back to NFL playoff weekend and our coverage. The Texans hire their GM without consulting Deshaun Watson. He heard the news on Twitter. How should Watson feel about the Texans? Should he demand a trade? We